And if we're in a virtual reality already, why would you divert yourself into another one that is even less real or mm. less has less value? Yeah. You know, towards our personal growth. Yes. That if we don't begin disarmament globally, um, there's no path forward to peace and prosperity for everybody. Yeah. It just isn't going to happen. One twig, you can snap. Two, it's harder. Three, it's almost impossible. That's the strength of the family. Yeah. And that's the strength of dropping all our borders, too. We're under the illusion that somehow we need them to be strong, to be a strong country. No, actually, it makes us weaker. That perception is cutting us off, dividing yes. us up and isolating yes. us yes. from each other. Why did I end up saving three people's lives in such a short time when I was young? Because it usually, that doesn't happen to people, right? And I thought that was really strange. What's the purpose of it? Until I read this children's book. That was an opportunity. That was a gift to me. Yeah. It, the thing is, it, well, if you, you know about mu in music or any form of creativity, it's like, oh, I did a song, so now I'm done? No. You, you, so at some point, you're gonna find another song and another yeah. song, right? Or you're gonna paint another picture, or whatever, yeah. because that's how creativity is. And each song and each painting is slightly different. And it's beautiful, they're all beautiful, right? So, yeah. Well, yeah, if you wanna be stronger, smarter, healthier, and happier, increase your love quotient. Connect yeah. to the force, or the source, or whatever you wanna call it, the web of light. Yeah. No, someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? Five, four, three, two, one. Boom. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are on site in the beautiful Palm Springs, California. We are now going to be talking about our path to peace and prosperity. We have Robert Stanley joining us on the show. Hi, Robert. Hey, Alan. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. Yeah, I'm <laughs> super excited for you coming on to our show now. It was great being on your Unicus Radio Hour very just recently. That yeah. was a great show together. It was our first time getting to chat online like that and you know do it on video. Right. That was nice. But now we get in person for our first time, which is excellent. It was so cool actually getting to finally be in our spiritual essences together in the same physical location. Yeah. For those that don't know Robert's background, Robert Stanley is editor of UnicusMagazine.com, author of two books on UFOs in Washington, D.C., and host of Unicus Radio Hour. And you can find the link in a bio below to UnicusMagazine.com and also find the first episode that we did together. That link is below as well. Both parts. Yeah. Robert. We had such a wide-ranging conversation the first time we talked, which is what I love so much, covering what is the ultimate purpose of humanity, where do we even come from, does spirit meet the body for these lessons on this planet. We covered so many cool areas of talk. We didn't really get to, we got into things like the love quotient, but we didn't really hammer out the, this path of optimizing peace and prosperity and how to exactly do that. And, I'm excited to talk about this with you. Let's start things off with, you know, this is a very interesting, again, just this idea that we are now here. We, there is something instead of nothing. There's life instead of nothing. And when we come here, we have this consciousness, this perception system to engage with each other and try and, and maximize flourishing and creative expression and all these things. Yet we have trillions of dollars of money every single year being poured into war, and violence and there's malevolence among us and that's kind of like this excuse that's been being propagated like there's an there is a nastiness in them and so it's really important for us to put up these walls and these these types of things to protect ourselves how do we transcend this monkey politics and these monkey wars and harmonize ourselves collectively with nature and each other to be this pinnacle civilization that we can be. Yeah, the first step is realizing that we're all family. And I know that's going to be hard for a lot of people that have prejudices for generations. You know, as you said, that's an excuse for bad behavior, basically. Um, actually, we usually um, attract people to us 
that we that have qualities that we dislike in ourselves. And rather than taking care of those things, we, we say, oh, they're the problem. If I just do something to them, you know, punish them or kill them, then I'm gonna feel better about myself. In fact, it doesn't work. It has never worked, it never will work. So all of the weapon systems that we have designed and developed over thousands of years of this current civilization are not making us safer, and they never will make us safer. They cannot. Only we can by increasing the love quotient in our heart um, and reaching out to others, especially those that we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. And, and it, because just threatening them obviously is going to escalate it. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. It's not the path to peace and prosperity. Um, you know, peace has to come before we can all prosper. That's, that's my understanding about the process is really pretty simple and yet difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, it's, it's not complicated, it's just freaking hard. Because we have, we, we including myself, have all these prejudices and just negativity that, um, especially when we get together collectively and point fingers or weapons, it, it escalates the negativity to a point where ultimately everything collapses. It's, it's a, I told you, this was pretty amazing to me. I only found it out recently. The dark side actually serves a purpose, and it's not limited to just this world. I, I just want to make this really clear to everybody up front. Mm. This was a huge revelation to me because I've been trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I've had really, really intimate experiences with what I would consider evil. Yes. Okay. So who's to blame? Well, apparently it was inherently designed. It's a program designed into creation yes. as we understand it. <laughs> that is like a circuit breaker. When there's too much negativity, the, s the circuit breaks and the system stops. It just collapses on itself and then it'll, it'll reset and it'll kind of come back. And if it works in balance, if there's enough love or spirituality and science is in balance, yes. then the civilization will go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Now, the spirituality and science, those are just words. The things that drive that though are us, our intent, you know? And our intent, if it's based on fear, that's where all the weapons come from, mm, mm -hmm. and war. Okay, so then it's one of the main ways maybe to view it is that if we, from within ourselves, are cultivating fear, then we cultivate war. Mm -hmm. If we, from within ourselves, cult cultivate love, then we cultivate peace. Correct. And it can be as simple as that. And then, so then it's like, and then it can maybe gets a little bit more nuanced where it, it's like, okay, well, so we, have, we have something that's cooking up with, within us from these different pockets of being raised in different cultures around the world with different amounts of socioeconomic status, um, different like privileges, accesses to basic needs. Uh, we're, we're indoctrinated into different religions, these types of things. And then, in some ways, like love becomes obfuscated, and we have to like pierce the veil that is the matrix that we're put into to realize that it is all love. Yeah. And so, we then, we then, it's it, it's an educate. It seems like it's an education problem with all children that are being born into the world, plus existing adults, plus the matrix itself has an issue with the um, illusion of separation and the illusion of, of propagation of fear and weapons and types of and these types of things, which is like, it's obfuscated that, that all encompassing uh, unbounded love. You know, you said a key word there was cultivate. And if you think of this as a garden and that we are seeds, our souls are like seeds of light in this garden here, you could say that the negativity, the fear is like weeds and it chokes out what we can consider bountiful or good herbs and plants that are life-giving, right? So, or sustaining. And so how do you tend a garden? You select those that you, that you consider to be what I just said, and you eradicate, you gotta pull out the weeds. Occasionally you have to, you have to tend the garden, otherwise it, it, goes, it goes awry. Again, I think that's built in, inherent. I, only now understand the importance of that. We have to participate. It's participatory, okay? We can't just sit there and go, okay, 
you know, give me abundance, give me peace. No, you, we have to work on it every day. Mm -hmm. We literally have to pull weeds of negativity out of our hearts every day because like in a garden, you, it, there are weeds, seeds from the weeds that are constantly falling into the soil from wherever, you know, within the matrix. And in, they're looking for fertile soil too. And if you don't do something to, the, th the thing is most people, I believe, most people on this planet feel like, oh, we've got we to you know, murder all the murderers. You know, well, wait a second. <laughs> That's not the path to peace. It, it starts inside each and every one of us, and then it becomes a collective. As we start to congregate and cooperate and collaborate you know, comp in, in a compassionate way, in something realistic, okay, not, not, not religious, because to me religion has been weaponized, I think, or politicized at the very least. Often, oftentimes it, it goes hand in hand with, with uh, martial actions or reactions. Um, but again, it, it, this is completely up to us. This isn't up to a government or a religion. That's kind of why I'm bringing them into mm -hmm. it, because we are a religion. We are government. Okay? When we, every time we participate, we're, we're endorsing it and, and giving it life and extending it into the future. So, and you know, a lot of people I've talked to on my show, when I ask about spiritual matters, I get people saying, well, I used to be, I was raised a Catholic, I used to go to church, but I, I'm not doing that anymore. I said, but you're still a spiritual person, aren't you? Yeah. Well then, if you know that, if you feel that essence of your soul, what are you doing with that? Because mm -hmm. just being passive is, um, it's not really solving the problem. Because the problem is not just mine or yours, it's, it's all, everybody, we're all in this together. Yeah. Yeah, that we're not all vibing on a divine wavelength, that it's a miracle that we're all here, that, that uh, evil serves a purpose of creating all these obfuscations to make it hard for us to actually realize how to work together. And so, uh, it actually ensures yeah. it. Ensures it that ensures we work hard to get it. In a peaceful, loving manner. Because if we don't, the system collapses. So Every time you look in history. Like you said, a circuit breaker. Yeah, yeah. And, I think, and my understanding is that's universal. And it makes sense because if one planet, just one planet, were to develop into like a Star Trek or Star Wars kind of scenario, and it was to spread across all of creation, eventually, exponentially, it would start to, to, to infect all of creation. So this was brilliant, honestly. So evil is the circuit breaker. It's, it's like a Fermi filter as well, these, these filters of either asteroid collisions or nuclear wars or diseases or pandemics or w rapid wealth inequality or any types of civilizational collapses, uh, endeavors into godlike powers without moral, spiritual, ethical evolution. And then these are like circuit breakers to make it so that these Fermi filters, so that the, like you said, if a civilization gets into these later stages of evolution, they can go and like spread themselves like a virus out the Scient cosmos. Scientific development without spiritual balance, yeah. That's the way it's been presented to me. In a children's book, of all things. Yeah. Allegedly a children's book about, you know, a, a friendly extraterrestrial giving children the advice because they're the future, saying, let me show you what a civilized world really looks like. Yeah. Because you don't live on a civilized Not world. Yeah. And that, I know, is shocking to a lot of us in so-called Western civilization. We think that we are civilized. Well, yeah, maybe compared to somebody that lives in the jungle with sticks and stones. But in the bigger scheme of things, we are not. We are not. Despite whatever technology we have, that is not a metric of one's level of civilization or um, civility, I should say, right? It, it's really a lot simpler than that. It's not about technology. It's about your love quotient that we were talking yeah. about before. and. Um, how, so how do you measure that though? Yeah. How do you measure? Well, be, you judge them by their deeds, not their words, because mm -hmm. certain ones of us that are so-called um, pathological, yeah. uh, they're very skilled at lying because they're predators. 
they are embodying the dark side. So they, they'll, they, so they would see somebody like you and I as weak because they think that if they trick us, you know, they could take advantage of us because we are supposedly defenseless because we want peace, right? And prosperity for everybody. Mm -hmm. And basically all they want is something for themselves. Mm -hmm. Again, those people present um, an obstacle, but it can be easily overcome without punishing them because ultimately, and this was the other thing that I learned recently, we punish ourselves. I know that for a fact, and um, one of the hardest things to do is forgive yourself. It doesn't mean excuse your behavior. I'm talking about truly forgiving yourself because you screwed up. And everybody does, by the way, yeah. okay? But if you cannot forgive yourself, you'll never be able to forgive anybody else. You'll never be able to move forward emotionally. and. Like you said, cultivate, cultivate this heart space so that, so that the love energy has a place to resonate. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm touching this. I'm probably, excuse me, <laughs> I, I forgot. There's a microphone. These people hear this thump. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, it's, uh, it, it's really not that complicated. It's just hard. It really is. I actually had a, a panic attack years ago here in Palm Springs because I was flashing back on things that happened to me when I was a child with my parents. And it was, <clears throat> it was really traumatic. I mean, you know, I don't think anybody has the so-called perfect childhood. And um, <laughs> the, the difference is, do I see myself as a victim or a survivor? Uh, and if I was a victim, that is a, um, that's a dissonant, position to take. That's, that's basically like, I'm, I'm, I give up. I'm, I'm, I'm help, helpless and helpless and somebody else, I'm abdicating my responsibility in all of this. Whereas as a victim is actually empowered to, to heal themselves and others that they can relate to through their pain and the healing. Because once you allow yourself to say, I survived this, I am stronger for this. I have healed this wound. And a big part of it, actually, the key element, the reason I'm bringing it up, is because I decided I would forgive myself first, and then I would forgive my parents. Mm -hmm. for, because, you know, they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And I know they were doing the best they could, but it, it was bad. It was really bad. They fought a lot. And uh, um, it frightens kids, you know, to see that, their whole support system is just yeah. like like yeah. and like an emotional earthquake. Yes. And and you go, who are you going to turn to? As a kid, you don't have a lot of options because they're your support, support system, system yeah. and they're just constantly fighting. And you're like, well, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's it's it, so on some level people shut down. I did on some level emotionally I shut down. But after I got married and I had a kid and we came out here and we were vacationing, it was like. Oh, wait a minute, mother and dad and the little boy all over again, all you know, over again, and that life. stuff that I was suppressing, you know, trying to like forget, it just came popping back up and I was like, I just felt like I was having a heart attack, but that's how panic attacks are. I wasn't going to die, but I realized that I wasn't really living either. I, I wasn't living my life. It, I mean, in this regard, I wasn't emotionally available 100% for my wife and my son. And that is, yeah, yeah. that is cruel. Um, Especially since you were just talking about your need as a child. For yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Why would I pass that on? That. Correct, yeah. You yeah. want to stop the trauma right away. Yeah, it's a, li yeah. a little bit like the vampire thing, yeah. you know. It doesn't always have to be sexual. Trauma abuse comes in many different forms. And it is, um, what do you call, uh, uh, contagious. Because it is, because we're emotional beings, it's past, past on, you know. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just saying from experience, that was a turning point. I probably wouldn't even be sitting here talking to you about these matters if I hadn't come to that key awareness. Yes. The other thing that happened that it was about, it was pouring rain here, which is kind of a weird thing. And there was rainbows everywhere. But at the same time, I think it was... Phuket, it was Thailand. They had a huge earthquake and a tidal wave and it killed a bunch of people. And I'm like watching this on the news. It was Christmas time here. 
And there's all these people getting killed by a tidal wave. And that brought up all kinds of memories. When I was a kid growing up in Malibu on the beach, I used to have dreams about, terrible nightmares about people getting killed by a tidal wave, you know? So it was, it was triggering something yeah. like an emotional tidal wave in me at that moment. And, and it was so weird because the juxtaposition of, hey, I've got a beautiful wife, a beautiful son, look at all these rainbows. And yet, like, I'm, I'm yeah. having this, like, like, knockout, drag out fight with this, like, inner demons, they call them. That's typically yeah. what we call them now. And the, the, the pills won't help. Let me tell you, the, sorry, the pills don't help. All the talk therapy in the world because the therapist can't actually do the work for you. For you, yeah. Right? Yeah. And a lot of them, a lot of those people are damaged themselves. Okay? Yeah. And that's why they go into that field. And I'm glad that they do. But I, try, I went down that path and ultimately it didn't help. It didn't help me at all. I found out, I told, I'm telling you, that was the only way, that for me anyway, yeah. to, to, to heal myself. Sincere self-work. And, and ultimately be available to be a dad, to be a husband. Stop the transgenerational trauma. And actually be a son to my parents, you know, because I was kind of, I, I, was, I was carrying a grudge. Yeah. yeah. And that's just a wall, man. That's yeah, just that's a, a freaking wall. emotional yeah. wall. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're making it really clear that love and the the path to peace and prosperity starts within from examples like what you just listed there. So yeah. we all have some sort of a of a trauma or some sort of a ancestral uh, trauma or some sort of a of a birthplace uh, issue around the time that we were young, um, throughout our first couple months or years of life, where something had built up and that it's up to us to treat it like a challenge that we want to overcome. On the other side of those, the traumas, the treasures, those are yeah. our biggest levels <laughs> up in life are right there, right in front yeah. of us. And yeah. so we gotta, yeah. if we remember that and we do that, then we become more loving towards our ancestors, our parents, our kids, etc., the people around us in our communities. Right. Then the love spreads, it butterfly right. effects like that. Yeah. And so then that's how we get to that peace and prosperity through our own self work. So that's kind of yeah. like one of the most if not the most important pillar is like yeah, start with self, self work. Yeah. Hardcore self work. Right, because if you heal yourself, then you're in a position to help others heal themselves. As opposed to because you can't yeah. impose that on anybody. All right? Because you know they're gonna resist if a person's not like seriously, you you know, it's so it's so intimately personal. Those emotions are all about you. And for somebody else to come in and that's why I say the therapists are really very limited what they can do let's let's revisit also what you said about the garden as mm -hmm. well uh, this is a really good analogy that i think would be useful to unpack further let's see how we can play tennis on it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so the let's let's see so the seed is the child that's born into the world and they come with this you know this unique DNA that gets to be expressed, their creative fruits get to be brought into the world, but they need the root system in place of love, compassion, yeah. water, food, shelter, etc. And so what we see is that like this, these seeds are in the garden. And so it's both within our own seed as our seed flourishes, we have to do that self work, which is kind of like identifying the weeds, plucking them out. Mm -hmm. And it's also watering our own roots with like exercise, sleep, yeah. meditation, eating Absolutely. well. Eating right, yes. Yeah. And then that's what waters and also surrounding ourselves with people that are smarter than us and like mm -hmm. and and creating more value than we capture. And spending some time in nature is really key. Yes. I know a lot of us right now are so caught up in digital you know, reality or simulation. I mean we talk is this a digital simulation? It doesn't matter. It's it's a virtual reality, okay? And we have a role to play here. But I think we're being completely distracted by um, uh, digital technology right now. But we're permitting ourselves to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. a challenge. It's a just it's just another obstacle. I'm not saying it's evil. It's just <laughs> it's it's taking us away from. It's disconnecting us from re the the purpose. Our purpose. You know, yeah. in a lot of ways, I see people are just so caught up in it, and it's, it isn't real. And if we're in a virtual reality already, why would you divert yourself into another one that is even less real mm. or less has less value? Yeah. You know, towards our personal growth. Yes. Now, 
That's a, that's a cool way to put it, that since we're already immersed as a character in this game, that we need to be focusing on our leveling up. And when we go to these devices that mostly distract us away from that leveling up process, it's actually less meaningful, all that type of stuff. I'll give you a better analogy. Yeah. Since I play tennis a lot, if, if I'm playing tennis and then there's a little break time, like where somebody's setting up for their serve or whatever we have like kind of going on here, we're not hitting the ball, yeah. I'll look over to the other court. Yeah. and see what's going on because tennis players are like that. We kind of want to watch and see, you yeah. know, if, you, if somebody's playing well, you're like, oh, wow. That's, Mon monkey that was see, monkey do. Well, yeah. kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, there's an interest level there. Totally. And it's very distracting to when you're on the court and somebody else is playing and they're like getting into it and you're, you're just looking over there. But you cannot, you're, you, it takes you away from being in, in, in the, the moment. moment. As yeah. a matter of fact, one of the things, uh, I think there's a book called The Zen of Tennis or the Tao of Tennis, actually, mm -hmm. the Tao of Tennis, it says that um, the less you think, the better you'll play. Yeah. Be Same thing with when I freestyle with hip-hop music mm. or when you do an interview. Yeah. It's the same thing as an interlocutor or as the person that's being interviewed. Yeah. Just flow. Flow instead of well, hyperanalyze. Because think less, feel more. It allows you to actually you connect with the moment. Yeah. Because if I'm thinking about... If I'm thinking about hundred things before the ball even comes to me, yeah, yeah. that means I am not open to the, the moment. I am like, I'm caught in a virtual moment in my mind instead of just being in that flow at, that, at the real moment, you know, connecting with that ball is all I should be thinking about. So there's yeah. little tricks for this, in tennis anyway, is just, just looking at the ball or listening. So one of the hardest things to do is actually listen to the ball being hit and then come whizzing over and then bouncing. If Whatever the technique is that allows you to stay focused, that's, yeah. that's what you should use. Yes. Okay? Um, and, and that's why, again, I feel really bad about digital technology. It started with, with um, radio was fine originally, but when TV came along and they started flashing all these lights at a certain yeah. rate and, and in training our, our thought process, yeah. it, it totally ripped us out of reality, took us into... Yeah. The subset. Yes, yes, and yeah, the 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 the, the immersive uh, experiences that are distractive and consumptive, and that are hijacking our dopaminergic reward system, versus ones that enable us to hold these techniques of focus towards our ultimate north star endeavors. And I love this analogy of the garden, and I'm sure we'll end up revisiting it, but I just, I just really like this one, the garden. So it's like cultivating our own self-work, self our own self-love, bringing up our love quotient, butterflying out the, that effect out, and then seeing more peace and prosperity, that sense. And then on, a, on just like a global level of monkey politics and war, and in, uh, it's just, is the way that the discernment happens is through the self-work and self-love and then spreading that with the butterfly effect? Is that how we do the discernment over time? Well, guess what? If nobody bought the arms, wouldn't matter how many they make. Now, does, these guys need to make a profit, right? But if they make all the, the armament and nobody uses it, they're out of business. The idea is that if I, if we all agreed to not use it, and then one yes. person does use it, right? That's kind of like the. Well, if that per yeah. look, there's always going to be. Here's the other thing too. People that don't have access to weapons will find a an ingenious way to act out their negativity, like we see with these people mm -hmm. um, driving trucks onto, sure. you know, pedestrian pathways. Right. So, so it isn't just about disarmament. Although that is a huge issue because it's gotten so far out of hand that if we don't begin disarmament globally, um, there's no path forward to peace and prosperity for everybody. Yeah. It just isn't going to happen. And another big one is just that it's, it's not just like $800 billion in the United States, <laughs> but it's like trillions of dollars globally. Yeah. And um, it's become an industrial complex and it now has what is called an embedded growth obligation. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, per there's a perpetual state of status quo that it has now. And to, and to the, basically every child that's born into the world now is born into the ideology of their, the World War I, World War II, Cold War, uh, just 
there's still ongoing uh, wars around, going around the planet, refugee camps around the planet, drones that are constantly monitoring intercontinental ballistic missiles, fighter jets. Like <laughs> you're just born into that paradigm, right. and so to get out of that rut is is we it's like a whole ethos change civilizational ethos change that process of self-love just updating the code away from war and towards peace but simultaneously recognizing that not everyone around the planet is just going to become self-loving overnight and so. that and so because of that then there's like we all do our best to level up our love while simultaneously staying slightly vigilant to just in case some people are not. Yes, you can defend yourself, but here's one thing I, I read last night that I thought was really profound. I had I never heard this before. It was Gary Zukoff was writing in his one of his books because he was a Green Beret. I don't know if you know that about Gary. He's a fantastic teacher. But when I read that, I really started to understand him a little better. And he said uh, he was reciting a, a, a particular time in Gandhi's life when he went up into the um, uh, a mountain tribe, I think it was in Afghanistan, and, and these were very warlike, you know, they say, fierce people, you don't want to mess with them, right, because they all have weapons and they, they'll shoot you, right? And he says, I have no fear. Yeah. I have no fear. And he went to speak to one of their, um, their, their you know, councils, and, he's, and, and he, he told them, he says, you only need that if you have fear. You only need weapons if you have fear. Right. Interesting. And, okay. and ultimately, the weapons cannot dissipate the fear. Only love can do this. And when he explained this, in a, however he explained this to the, the tribal leaders, the tallest, burliest, most well, you know, the alpha male, yeah. he, put his, he put his rifle down in front of God and he said, okay, yeah. I understand. I will follow you. I'm, I'm willing to follow you. Yeah. You know, you're a little guy. You say you have no fear. Yeah. And you're going to teach me to have no fear without my weapon. Yeah. I, I want you to show me this. And he became, he became a faithful companion for the rest of Gandhi's life. He followed this man because he believed that that was an, something that he'd never even considered before. Okay? Because it's like a... Yeah, yeah during that but, rut, that indoctrinated yeah. process. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. again, it's just a fear. I like that. Fear leads to weapons and love leads to peace. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you can't see the thing about it is you cannot enforce peace on others. You, 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 yeah. you, you know? You can help uh, ask people questions, which then lead them to process of self reflection, which right. leads them to peace, which leads us which leads them to love, which leads us to peace. Right, but it's, it, yes. The thing is that if they're, if they're so focused on the fear, unless you show them the other way, then they're going to just continue down that path. Well, the door has to be made available, and that's what a question can do. Yeah, sure. Questions can show people there's an alternative door if we're constantly walking into the fear door. Yeah. The question illuminates the, uh, the love door, and then they see, okay, well, there's a love door. I didn't even know that that exists. <laughs> now I can try and see what it's like and feel it, maybe walk through it occasionally, yeah. and that leads to peace. Look, I, I know that there's a lot of people in the, the, in the military and other armed, uh, you know, people like um, uh, first responders, the police officers, um, they, they love their families, but there's still this wall up about us and them. And the truth of the matter is that um, most people don't have weapons on this planet. I, I never saw that in Hong Kong, and yet people still found ways to harm each other like they're doing now. But um, generally speaking, the, the military population of this planet is very small. In the United States, it's only about one percent. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. if you include all the veterans that are, you know, then it would be around three percent. Sure, but it's really small. We're talking yeah. very small number, and I, I know they seem monolithic, and and like intractable and as far as their their position. Like mm -hmm. you know, hey, we're here to protect, protect you. you. Don't yeah. tell me to drop our weapons Nothing. because yeah. then we're all going to be vulnerable. Yeah. You don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, showing. <laughs> Showing me the other way is no, actually, as long as you keep holding the weapons and pointing them at other people within our global family, yeah. we're all at risk. The beautiful world that our, all our hearts know is possible. 
and yet it's not the flick of a light switch, which is what makes it complicated. Yeah. It, we, the, we have the evil in place purposely, mm. and then that it can't just be a flight switch over to complete peace and prosperity, that then that makes this process more difficult, but it's still the up-leveling in consciousness around the planet towards love and peace is exactly what eventually leads us to that prosperity. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so it has to be done through like a grassroots style of sincere self-work and development and yeah. I have. I want to. I want to also um, make sure we get to resetting the global financial system <laughs> in general. Yeah. Because okay. I think it's become more and more clear through conversations we've had on the show, and uh, more and more people talking about it and highlighting this. But like fractional reserve banking was actually not what was first intended when we developed money. Right. We developed money for exchanging things of value for right. each other, and now it's turned into a ponzi scheme yeah. and we are literally just blinded to what's happening behind the curtain this big curtain of the financial system and we're completely over it and more and more people are waking up and saying that i like decentralization i like the distributed ledger technology i like cryptocurrencies i like not having a centralized uh, uh, control system over a currency that's completely bullshit manipulated mm -hmm. and so what would it look like to make the transition in this reset and how would that empower us uh yeah that's a good question i'm obviously not an economist uh, but i'm i've yet to meet one that actually seems to know much about the economy. Whenever I listen to those people, there's only one that I actually, and she's not an economist, it's uh, Catherine Austin Fitz, is the only person that ever makes any sense talking about how corrupt the economy has become in the United States. I didn't think it could actually get worse, but it has. Um, stealing trillions of dollars, you know, and using the federal government to do it. So that's a top-down organized crime problem, it's, and it's not just the U.S. I think I mentioned this to you last time we spoke, but it, the numbers I've seen published are over $240 trillion worth of debt. Yeah, it's crazy. That's more, that's more debt than equity. The whole planet is bankrupt, okay? Yeah. And I know some people say, oh, the, this, you know, the, the breakaway civilization stole it so they could leave the planet. I don't care who, who did it. The problem is it happened. Now, how are we going to fix it? I'm, you know, I'm kind of the of the old school belief that um, it's called jubilee. I was told that this is actually something that's been done in the past. It's, mm -hmm. it's called debt forgiveness. It's but in biblical terms, it's called a jubilee. In Native American terms, it was called potlatch, and it's something that people did routinely. Um, it was considered to be a, a, something really high esteem for you, for a person to be able to give away their stuff. <laughs> Uh, periodically, yeah. kind of start over, yeah. and and it, it makes sure that everything is recycled and reset. Um, ah, boy. Um, unfortunately, some people have to be taken out of the system because even if we did a global reset and restructuring, um, bad actors appear. Yeah, yeah, they would come back yeah. and do the same kind of criminal activity. Yeah. So we. Then this is again, this is what Catherine Austin Fitz has been so amazing when I listen to her. To, she says, we all have to participate. Right now we act as though um, we just let other people take care of it. We don't realize that we're financing the criminality, the corruption is coming right out of our own pockets. Our, our investments are going into these things. To, yes, they are um, disguised, a lot of them, but it doesn't mean you can't do due diligence especially in the digital age. Everybody has access to that kind of information, especially if you sign up for, and this is not an endorsement for her, okay? Celebrity Report is fantastic. You can get it digitally, and for sure it'll come to you. The, the printed version, sometimes it's interrupted, I think. People don't want that information coming out. But if you're interested in actually being proactive about you know, uh, your money or your assets or whatever you want to call it, um, she, she gives some really good outlines on how we can do that from a, like you said, grassroots. She, she actually says you, it, it's county by county. That's how we have to work. Think globally, act, lo oh, excuse me, act locally, think globally. Mm -hmm. And that's really true. That is absolutely correct. Um, because th what they say about corruption, or power actually, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the larger the institution, 
there's more likelihood that there's even greater corruption going on. Totally, it's, it's, which it's is what systemic. S yeah. Now we're at the level of what the initial um, uh, founding fathers said was just, you know, you have uh, one person that is uh, representing maybe 30,000 people. Mm -hmm. Now it's one person in Congress representing 600,000 people. Right. And that's an absolute joke. Yeah, um, it's impossible. We're supposed to have a Congress that is like 8,000 people now. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's really, and what would that look like? How much, what, uh, you know, how big are these governments supposed to be across the world? How much of our <laughs> how much of our spiritual actualization can offset the amount of corruption and greed and whatnot that occurs? I like yeah. the I like the reset in terms of um, taking it from a really grassroots county by county level. I like that. I'm just I'm just really like what 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 is it that like. You know, cryptocurrency and decentralization technologies are fascinating because they kind of they kind of go like this. They kind of flip the system on its head, which is fantastic. Um, but then this whole idea of like county by county is like, okay, well, you can't get you can get like millions or billions of people to sign up for digital currencies pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but it's much more difficult to try and get, I think, um, from a single county, uh, well, it takes longer, mm -hmm. at least, to get it from a single county to have all of the people in that county have some sort of a new system of, of money slash trade slash barter, etc., and then have that slowly scale out as a system of finance. Yeah, I haven't studied her model closely enough, but if I understand it correctly or at all, is that, um, Counties invest. Okay, so like pension plans for. Uh, I think I have a better way to put this. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I think the better way to put this would be when we when we do a complete reset and redesign mm -hmm. of the way that we exchange things of value across our planet. What would you want that to look like? Well, it certainly wouldn't be based on fiat currency. It may be digital, but again, there has to be some sort of mechanism where people can be accountable because right now there is no accountability. I told you, one of the things that she brings up, it's, it's called FASB56. And that is a new system that they've put on into, into practice, even though it's illegal, but because it's coming from the federal government, they say, well, we, we're not going to show you our books because uh, to the General Accounting Office. We can't show you your book, our books because it's a matter of national security. Really? Okay, so you can basically just steal however much yeah. money you want and never be held accountable? Yeah, big I mean, problem. So, yeah, because it's now tens of trillions of dollars that she knows of. She's been able to, over a period of years, and get hammered for it. And any all her colleagues, you know, everybody that, that started to peek behind the curtain of yeah. this kind of corruption. They're like, Whoa. so we're talking serious criminals here. Now, what would it look like? I, I, we've already been down this road. I mean, clearly before money, people bartered um, services and goods. And you know, gift economy. Was well, yeah, yeah, there's. It's not that I difficult. I would just literally love the divinity in you. And I would be like, Hey, you wanna? I have some apple. Like, you wanna have yeah. some apple together? Yeah. It wouldn't be like you must pay me for this <laughs> apple, you know. Well, that's those are that's chasing shadows. It's not real. It's none of that money is real. Like time, the, the, this is not uh, real. Just an illusion. It's a, yeah. It's relative. It's it's an agreed upon illusion. Yeah, agreed upon. All right. Illusion. So it's a subset of the virtual reality. We keep creating these subsets. Yeah, like and money is another one, the yeah, shared yeah. hallucination, you have money. Yeah. Money and time and yeah. other things. It's, it, what it does though, is it puts us in a box. It's like a maze. Mm. It, it box in a box in a box and pretty soon you're just like, man, I don't even know where I am. That's it, that's a great way to put it. Okay. The more we add shared hallucinations, <laughs> which are boxes, yeah. uh, we go from this abundant divine spiritual birthplace of earth to like we're in a 10 foot by 10 foot white room in a straight jacket <laughs> and it's like yeah it's like you must 
work 80 years of life to buy your way out of this room. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I sign over this shit. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. The more uh, negative shared hallucinations, the more constrictions on our ultimate spiritual divine purpose that are there. And we don't even fucking realize, like, why yeah, are we here? I think it hijacks also our ability to be creative or imaginative. Yeah. And those two things are co-equal. Um, unfortunately, in this world, we've been, one of the lies we've been led to believe that is our imagination is... Uh, like um, it's not valuable it's not real so why give it any validity or, or energy you know when in fact imagination is the, is the birthplace of all creation of all manifestation yes yes yes, yes. you know and so these these as you call them the hallucinations the shared hallucinations actually inhibit us because like if I have um, if I can imagine something beautiful and I share that vision with you and you share it with others. Now, pretty soon, we're, we will manifest that. Yeah. That, that, that becomes reality. Yes. So, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King, he had a dream, he had a vision, he shared it with us, and it definitely made a difference. Even though he had to pay yeah. with his, his physical life, I guess, you know, that was the price that had to be paid. There was a massive butterfly effect of, of the great minds of, that, set, that had, um, were mar martyrs for their um, dreams. I and, know he didn't yeah. want to do that. He didn't yeah, want to, nobody there wants to There was a lot more impact, yeah, to... Yeah. Okay, so but let's get yeah. back to something else you're talking about. So when we reach a tipping point of um, love yes. and peace on this planet, we're going to uh, receive a lot of help Mm. from our extended family off this world mm. and not before that mm. because not only would it be it would, people could not receive it anyway because they're, they have so much fear they'd be like ah the aliens are invading yeah. but in fact they are like I said they are extended family they are benevolent and they uh, do have it's not just about technology by the way they, they have some very advanced techniques and other resources that they would love to share with us because we are family, why wouldn't they? I'll tell you why. It's <laughs> because we are so caught up in our own fears that if, if and when they show up, we panic. And actually, it's not just we. It's, it's the leadership under the current paradigm of negativity, of paranoia. Yeah. They are looking desperately for a way to manufacture a threat from off-world so that they can somehow then perpetuate their... Um, more fear? More of the fear and, and their control mechanism. Yeah, yeah. And weapons, basically. Yeah. And they haven't been able to figure out how to do it because it's such a big lie. It's, yeah. it's, it's the mother of all lies, unfortunately, because it's... And it's also keeping us uh, quarantined here. That particular yeah, that's it, yeah. lie is, is probably the worst because it is, it is keeping us stuck. Uh, on, not only on this world, but it's preventing us from having interaction yeah. with our family members from off-world. Yeah. So it's as though there's a uh, there's like a spiritual school that we're collectively a part of, and we need to level up to the point where we can unlock uh, more of the uh, the next level uh, that that is even cooler powers, even etc. Whereas right now it's. Um, uh, the, 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 the fear and weaponry and that type of stuff winning is uh, it's, it's cancerous to our up leveling and we're not able to unlock those new skills that are actually really beautiful and divine. Let's let's do um, the abolition of organized religion. This is again. There's so many points of nuance here that that I um, that I hope we can uh, get to. Just one of them here is that like religion is. There's useful lines of code in religion, mm -hmm. and there's extremely stupid lines of code, archaic lines of code that need to go away. They're toxic. They're toxic. Yeah. So because they're fear-based. So it's like, it, I, my maybe yeah, it's fear-based. My little point of contention would be a little asterisk, and it would just say abolition of bad lines of code in religion, and like. And like, also the idea that like, here's another interesting point. I've been talking a lot about pantheism and I mentioned it to you mm -hmm. on the show as well. Yeah. That all is God, period. Mm -hmm. Like all that is, is God and we're all part of that and we ourselves are God, it's all God. Okay, cool. But then Islam and Judaism both actually 
talk about pantheism. Mm -hmm. So, and this is, you know, from my friends that have studied it, I haven't actually gotten to around to getting deeper in it myself. And I was like, that's profound. So that means that as long as we have some sort of a different ways up the mountain to sacred divinity, then isn't it then that it's like abolishing the bad lines of code but keeping the good lines of code in religion? How do you feel about that? I'll make this very simple. Okay. God did not invent religion. Man did. Um, religion, but if God invented, but if God created us and we created religion, isn't that the transitive property in geometry? No, because we actually created a distortion by a lack of our understanding. Mm, okay. Again, again, you call it lines of code, bad lines of code, whatever. It's the same thing. It's a distortion. Yes, it's a distortion. So then, if we had a pure connection to God and Source, we wouldn't have made religion. Most religions are, we would say, faith based. Um, it's not based on knowing through experience. If mm. one person has a, re a spiritual experience, that absolutely precludes any need for religious order. And everybody is, um, has a divine right to connect or reconnect with the Creator at any time. Yes. It's, and it's very simple. There's, there's no um, political nonsense or fear in that this, that's required, you know? Look, most of those the gods of religion are, are war. Jehovah, Yahweh, are, and even, uh, uh, what is the Islam term for it? Um, oh God, I'm blanking. Uh, Allah. Uh -huh. Yeah, these are, these are war gods. Or mm -hmm. our, our perception, like you said, like a, a shared hallucination, mm -hmm. our misperception or distortion of what we think God is. It's not God that created religion. God doesn't create weapons. We do that. And we use that to then supposedly... Okay, wait, 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 what? wait. So, God, there's, there's both, you know, that all is one with a monism, but there's also dualism, which is part of all that is God or creation. Mm -hmm. And that dualism is both good and evil. And as we talked about at the very beginning, evil is there with a purpose. Yeah. And so evil is there with these weapons. Evil is there with the uh, fear. Right. And that's there with the purpose. And so then it's source that created it and not humans or is it humans distortion of, of source, source yes. that created fear yes and it has we have a lot of help in that regard like i said the program running in the background we'll call it evil. that's a tough distinction let's stay with that for a moment so that we can at least so at least if i can learn it maybe other people can also <laughs> um understand hey, it i'm better. just starting so, to understand it myself so so then so then so we typically what i think the string of thinking is normally is that we have creation which created good and evil and that we are baked into that but really creation created create created it created this experiment and then humans misinterpretation yes. of creation and disconnection from source is what created evil and fear uh, no, the fear and evil was part of the code that was written in there, as I said before. Yes, okay. okay, so when we embrace... We're amplifying it? Yes, exactly. Okay. We, so it was in the code, but it could be like dormant code. Look, it's really very simple. When, when I embrace love, there's no room for hatred or fear in my heart. That's right. And when I... Interesting. When okay. I did that, I had okay. such, a, such a hard juxtaposition between... Between evil, the day that I sh that I saved that boy's life, he was bleeding to death, and I felt yeah. evil, and I saw the parasites in the room. When I went up onto the mountain and I started to resonate from my heart, one thing, love, love, love. It connected me with the light. It connected yes. me with the Father. See, and, and that see that was an experience. That was my, and it took me a long time to interpret it in a way that I I, I can articulate it with people saying that, you know, that I'm crazy. But the bottom line is this, everybody has the divine birthright to reconnect because it's, we're, we're all part of this family. And the distortion comes in when we embrace fear and negativity. And that 
so it's an interpretation. Religion is an interpretation of what the creator is. Okay, so when we feel, because this is an experience that I know many people um, have deep experiential wisdom yeah, with, sure. is the idea of literally being unbounded love and just being tied into source on a divine godlike basis and just being there and just being fucking in love with that <laughs> then you're saying when you're in that state there's no room for fear right and that's beautifully said because then then now we're saying all the way back to source which is that if we were all vibrating on that wavelength of love peace prosperity there'd be no room for fear and, and there's okay. no need for religion either. So it becomes either. dormant, and yeah. then it, there's and there's no room for religion. Okay. Not not organized okay. religion like that. Everybody I talk to, they say I'm spiritual and not religious. Yeah, because religion is political. It's the yeah. politics of spirituality that we don't really need that. It's sort of like the the economic system. Yeah. It's based on fear and lack. There is no lack of anything. <laughs> <laughs> the the creation is all about abundance, creativity, connecting. You know, connecting. That was the other thing that was shown to me when I was up in the mountains in Malibu was uh, that they were all connected to a, through a web of light. Science calls it yes. entanglement. Yes, yes. But I saw it. Yes, I've yes, seen yes, it. Yes, I, yes, I've yes, actually yes. seen some graphics of it. It's, it's, it's very rudimentary because when I saw it, it was totally holographic. And I realized I was part of that web of life yes, or light. Yes, yes, yes. And it's not just light. It's information. It's emotions, it's everything, it's everything, man. It's like, so how can we sit here and say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm poor, I'm homeless, I'm sick, I'm, well, well hold on, you're, you're a child of God, you're, you're in creation, you're not just sitting on a planet in a room, you're surrounded by a massive creation, by this yes. intelligent right. creator that loves you. It's like, hello, are you paying attention? <laughs> no, you're, you're distracted by the fear. You know, whatever it is, whatever it is. And the, you know, like I said, this is not to judge anybody, okay? Because I've been, I struggle with this my whole life. I'm 59, I don't mind telling people I'm, you know, I've been around. Robert looks hella good, by the <laughs> way. I met, this was our first time meeting in person and I, I was like. Thanks, but I, that's not why I brought it up. The, the point is, I'm not, I know, okay, I look young, but I've actually been around. I've been to 59 countries in 59 years so far. So I've seen cool. some yeah. of the world. Yeah. And that, that doesn't mean that I know anything more than anybody, but I've, I've made an effort to try and figure things out, and I've had a lot of help along the way. You know why? Because I asked. I asked. It's okay to ask. That's not a religious thing, by the way, to ask for help. For, you think it's religious to ask from your parents, can you help me out? No. No. And so, uh, but I was surprised, let me tell you, when I, w I wasn't just sitting on that mountain that night going, help, help, help. I somehow intuitively knew that what, what I experienced that day, that boy with the, with the boy and his grandparents where he was bleeding to death, that that felt evil. So what is the opposite of that? It, it was frightening, it really was frightening, okay? And it, it, so I somehow I, I intuitively knew that the opposite of that would be love. And, and so you could say it was accidental or whatever. Believe me, it wasn't a logical thing. I don't think love is all about logic. That's what I was saying before. Yeah, we're about think it. less, feel, feel more. more. If, yeah. When we think so much, we kind of cut off this area. Yeah. And actually, you know, Hard Math Institute, I think you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they've, they've actually mapped it that, yeah. that this is the biggest energy field here. But we can increase it or decrease it. Yeah. Only we can do, only we can do that for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you could say somebody could be, well, you could be what a targeted individual now, directed energy weapon system. I mean, That's come it, on, yeah, yeah. I know that stuff is real, but you don't have to participate in it. I don't. I know it's real. I know people try to screw with me a lot because they don't like me talking about these matters. You know, to being so transparent or or you know truthful. But I, it's my God-given right to to communicate. All right, and I'm and I'm doing more from my heart. Yes. Now you can tell when someone is speaking from their heart versus their brain. You can tell. It's hard for me. It's though. hard <laughs> for me too. Um, it's it's a very beautiful process of learning. It's like going through processes of slowing down and opening your heart and feeling unbounded love for the divinity in you and for all of the people that are watching Every right moment. Now. Every moment Every is beautiful moment. If, you, if you allow yourself to really connect. 
doesn't matter what That's it is, a glass of water or a beautiful bowl of candy or there's lights out here or butterflies. I don't care, man. Yeah. If you let yourself connect to it on a heart level, yes, you start to see the beauty in everything and everyone. And it's funny because then the contrasting perspective of that is something like, there's not enough time. The economy is <laughs> roaring right now. We need to capitalize on the amount of profits that we can make. Yeah, I feel you know. sorry for people that go down that path because ultimately they're just screwing themselves. Yeah, they're going to hurt some other people, but actually, again, this is part of the circuit breaker. The negative people are attracted to each other to do the negative deeds. And it, it's like an, it, here's the thing, it's like snow building up a, to a point where there's just an avalanche. Avalanche. You know, that's, yeah. I know that's not the best analogy. That's a good one too. Well, it's okay. These, it, I like these analogies. They're know, all good. Circuit yeah, breakers, avalanches, gardens. You know, they used to call those parables. Parables. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Anyway, we're, okay. we're, we're getting Let, somewhere. We're getting, yes. we really are figuring it out. And it's not complicated. But it is difficult. It is difficult when you've been... Not complicated, but difficult. The, yeah, 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 because it's... Because it's self-work. It's well, about self-work. Because the, the longer you, you've you been addicted to negativity... Yeah, the right. The more difficult it is to embrace the love quotient and start letting that work on you because it's it, through you. I mean, I, it's like... Yeah, through you, yeah. It's through you because, see, this is the thing, man. It's the, old code that's The been web of light is yeah. enormous. Your computer can do a lot, but when you plug it into the internet, now it's got it's got yeah. parallel processing from millions of computers. Yeah. Okay, the same is true and for true, our yeah, soul. Yeah, yeah. When we connect to the web of light, <laughs> you there's all kinds of stuff you That's can upload, download, whatever. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, it's kind of like when you get connected to the web of light that you get to actually tune into new channels that previously you may have only been living life on channel three, but now you learn that there's fucking channel four through 6,000. Yep. And there's also um, not only those channels, but then you also get to experience divine beings and understanding what right. their channels are and like what their, how many channels they've surfed in. Well, okay, so, all right, that's again, that's a, you're right, but that's an intellectual way of putting it. Yeah. What about the love quotient? The you want yeah. You want to increase your love quotient? Okay, fine. Love somebody else. So you gotta love yourself first, but then when you start to do, like, I, here's what I was blown away by. I was wondering, why was I, why did I end up saving three people's lives in such a short time when I was young? Because it usually, that doesn't happen to people, right? And I thought that was really strange. What's the purpose of it? Until I read this children's book. That was an opportunity. That was a gift to me. Yeah. And I, I, I thought back and I'm like, well, I, I mean, it's, you don't even, you, it's a reflexive thing. For me anyway, I wasn't thinking of going, well, I'm, I'm, I'm earning good karma or something. No, it wasn't like that. It's like, holy crap, somebody's going to die. You know, I, I don't know them. I just want to help because, because yeah. I have empathy. Or I still, I'm intact. I still have empathy, whatever you want to call it. But uh, when I was reading this children's book, they said, you know, what, if you saw someone drowning, would you pray to God? No, you go save them. Or you go save them. And then it's like, and, and if you did, wouldn't that be a blessing? Not only for that person, but for you, that yeah. you that, that actually you were there to do, to do, to do the that. work of God. Yeah. You know, to help the rest of your, your fellow, your family member. See, that's the thing, you know, I, say, I, I used to think, like everybody else, because I was raised that way, oh, well, you're not part of my family. You know, you're not part of my religion. You're not part of my country. But the more I started traveling around, yeah. I'm meeting all kinds of people from around the world. I realized, oh, no, man, we're all the same. Yeah. We're all in this together. Yeah. People from around the world really quickly behave like your family. A lot of the time that happens. Do you know, even the language, beautiful. even the language, they, if, when they, they say, hey, brother, or they'll say sister, or auntie, or uncle. They don't just call you like by your name. If you're a friend, if you're a friend, they call you that. They refer to you as family. Yes, yes. I noticed that and I was like, wow. Yes, yes. Okay, so they haven't lost that connection. Yeah, like stay, stay over at our home, please eat with us. Please yeah, oh, there's in. that too. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much greater hospitality. Let's, let's talk about um, universal health care. Okay. okay, so what is the deal with us not having, <laughs> not having like, an adequate way for us to take optimal care of our bodies and for us to uh, 
get rid of the amount of self-dealing that exists in the healthcare system and replace that with inclusive stakeholding with each other's healths. We're super far away from let food be thy medicine, medicine be thy food. These like first principled ways of thinking are so far away from that. Now it's like now it's like we're relying on 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 self-dealing institutions to feed us. We're dealing we're relying on governments to ensure us. We're relying on them to provide services to us. It just feels as though everything's upside down and backwards. It is. It is because another part of it is that they're not dealing with the emotional aspect. They treat us like machines, or I should say we permit them to treat us like we're just biomechanisms that they can slice and dice and medicate. And it does very little um, to deal with the actual energy of who we are, you know. And in that regard, we're all ill. I think. I think we're all suffering. We all need to heal. Yes. And again, I, a big part of that is forgiveness. And you ever hear that walking into any clinic? No. You need to forgive yourself? So, no. Hey, let me tell you something. I, my wife, I shouldn't say this, but my wife is very, very sad. She was depressed. I said, well, have you forgiven yourself? She said, for what? I said, look, come on. Just yeah. start Start with one thing. One thing. Let's see yeah. what happens. What's the, what's Three pages later. Three pages later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, That's oh right. my God, I'm feeling so much better. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. Welcome to grieving. <laughs> yeah, welcome to writing down how we feel and reflecting on it. Yeah, we're not into, most of us are not in touch with our emotions. So, okay, you want to have universal health care? First, you got to reform the health care system so that it's really working for everybody. Okay, it isn't, I know it's all about profit right now, that's a big part of it, but it's not even functional. It doesn't do the job, all right? And that, that I feel, is the really big problem that, that nobody wants to address yet. It, some people, little people, but I'm talking about in the medical profession. If you go in for a broken leg, you'll get your leg fixed quite well. You'll get a fucking big bill, yeah. but if you, especially if you don't have insurance, but at least it works. You do get your leg fixed. Right, but then there's, okay, there's the, the, uh, then there's a bigger question. Why was your leg broken to begin with? What lesson was to be learned? I'll, t I'll tell you, I don't have broken a lot of bones, but the last time I did, I was on the tennis court and I fell backwards and I, and I broke my wrist. Mm -hmm. I healed it up in about six weeks and I avoided surgery. That's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. what the doctor said. He said, I didn't want to tell you this, but you were so close to having surgery with pins and, or screws. And I'm like, really? And he goes, yeah. He goes, I'm amazed at what you did. Well, I said, I had help, you know. But I used supplements and I, and, and other sound therapy, and I also went and I saw somebody I knew that the, I talked to this really great acupuncturist. She goes, well, look, you need more than just needles. She goes, I know how to do the electricity. I can put elect, I can literally put electricity on both sides of this and it'll jump the gap and help it. But I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to cast, I don't want to cast. No, yeah. no, I said, I don't want surgery, I don't want to cast. I just don't want to have surgery sure. on top of this. I said, I know how I did this. I know what was wrong, what I was thinking. I was really angry yeah. at these, the inner demons. Yeah. And, I, and I was cursing them, yeah. calling them ankle biters. Instead of And you know what? Them. I tripped yeah. over my own ankles, ankles. on the court yeah. and broke my wrist. Yeah. That, see, <laughs> okay. you do a good job at literally immediately seeing the lesson. And that's big because then you can have a process of self-reflection and then growth from that. I'm end. just saying, it's a, for it's all good. of us though, it's an opportunity to heal on multiple levels. Yeah. You know, and uh, ultimately, I realized I learned something very valuable: is that um, <laughs> cursing the inner demon is actually playing into the negativity. Correct. You know, it's We're a not level here to combat evil. We're no. here to shine light and be pure. You rise above it with love yeah. and compassion yes. and good deeds, and it's like just being pissed at them, you know, or threatening them or, or whatever. Yeah, well, not only that, it actually is. It's, 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 it gives them license to then but further attack us. Let Let's try and do this from a uh, uh, a redesign and reset perspective okay. again. So healthcare. Yeah. Okay. What would it look like if we were to reset or redesign this? Are we thinking like? Uh, you know, the child's born into the world, and immediately the first thing 
that the child is giving us that love and compassion from parents, the food and water. It's these are like it's based on like family and community and all these other inclusive stakeholders that care about the child's well being. Okay, if the child gets sick, then now the question is, or the adult gets sick. Now, if the adult's leg is broken or sick, what whatever the, the deal is, what happens at that point? How do we help people get that healed? already exists? What I'm more focused on is preventative medicine. Yep. Okay, in a holistic fashion, and at levels that I don't think are being even considered right now. Um, we should be healthy. We should live a lot longer. Clean water, do. food, sleep, exercise, the basics. And there's other, like Royal Rife, we know we could be brought, instead of cell towers broadcasting frequencies that, that disrupt ourselves, we could be broadcasting frequencies that actually energize and rejuvenate ourselves. Do we know what frequencies? Oh yeah, sure. It's very simple. It's we already know what frequencies healthy cells vibrate at. They mm -hmm. have the code. They know so it. So we need to pulse out the frequency that healthy cells vibrate at. Yeah, yes. I mean, and that's part of healthcare, by the way. Okay. That should be part of healthcare. Healthcare is is holistic. It's not just something you do after you hurt yourself. It's it's. It's preventative. Interesting. So could massive towers be pulsing out the oh. same frequency that healthy cells? I'll have. tell you. I tell you. The God, certain certain entities already know how to do this. It's called the tree of life. It's not a tree. It's a cell tower. It's ancient technology. Atlanteans had that. They misused it, and ultimately their whole civilization collapsed. But the tree of life and the tree of good and evil is is cell tower technology. That's what we call it now. All right? So I'm going to walk you through this. I think I told you about this before. And I have all the graphics. I can prove what I'm saying to you. The tree of life is a what we now call a cell tower because it was broadcasting frequencies that literally went into our cells and, and reduced well, to the gods, the so-called gods of Atlantis. They're not from other planets. They're from this one. And they went into the dark. They went into the dark side. But anyway, the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the same thing. It's, it's what we call cell towers. It's this wireless network technology. And it is both, we use it for good. Other people use it for evil. You see that every day. You look on the internet. It's like, oh my God. Some people are just putting like, you know, beautiful puppy love out there. And other people are like... It's so toxic you don't even want to touch it. You don't even want, you know, just like, please, please. Right? Yeah. So that's that those two trees, now people are say, Robert, you're nuts, the cell towers are not trees. Well guess guess what? Look around you. Have you seen the cell towers disguised as tree as trees? It's the same thing. It's been here for thousands of years. It's just it was off limits to us. When it was given to the modern version of of the workers, the genetically modified workers, they're not from the gods are not from anywhere other than this world, right? They abused the technology because they lacked the spirituality. They just, their science went up to here, their spirituality yeah. was down here. They abused the genetics, they abused the energies, and they literally collapsed on themselves. But they, when they reconstituted it, they wanted to have this servant class. So, so there's various levels of, of manipulation that have gone on here, or abuse, I would say, of, of the creation. And we didn't invent this stuff yesterday. Technology like this has been around forever, and it always will be. It just it's inherent in who we, in what we are. Uh, it's the abuse of it, though, is the, is the problem. So when we're talking about healthcare, universal healthcare, it is something, as I said before, um, part of the thing is they're not just making us sick, they're making us crazy with these self towers. That's been proven. Uh, it, it's, it makes people irritable and or literally violent, you know, and, and uh, it's not a conspiracy theory. That's just a condition that we're suffering from. So, as I said before, we're all suffering. We're all ill on some level because of this. So that has to stop. Mm -hmm. That has to stop. Otherwise, we're never going to be... Um, well, we can't really heal when that kind of violation is going on, that distortion is, is really cutting us off from the rest of, 
creation. Yes. And it's, you know, again, it's a challenge. It's done by design by the dark side because it wants to perpetuate itself. This is really interesting about code. What they call artificial life. Um, the first one, the, the first one that was written was called Sugarscape. And it was red and black digital ants fighting over a digital pile of sugar. Mm -hmm. And each time it was slightly different. It was the same thing. There's very few rules in the code. But they were fighting. They were competing, I should say. They were competing. So this is another problem, is the, uh, the, the level of competition that we accept in not just healthcare, but everything else, but especially since we're talking about healthcare. There should, if there was a level of cooperation in health, real healthcare across the planet, a shared benefit system, whatever that may look like, I don't know. But it has to be global. It shouldn't be just regional. It has to be global because we're all part of the same network. We're all part of the same family. Um, here's the thing. It, what we're talking about, it's not, it doesn't take a lot of money to do these things, to broadcast these frequencies. It's more, there's more profit in keeping people sick and stupid, and that's why they perpetuate it. Okay? So, so the thing is, people need to, it's, it's what we were saying before about laying down the weapons. The only reason that this persists is because, because of the paranoia. Yeah. So then, because there's more money in keeping people stupid, ignorant, um, but that's but that's a very limited. When that, I say that's profit, one way that it propagates. Yeah, but for that's the profit, not so. that's not peace and and prosperity for yeah. everybody. That is allegedly profit for some, some. at the expense of so the the, the, many, the many, which right? is which is a solution towards peace and prosperity would be to do things like to take the vibrational sequence and frequency of healthy cells and propagate that. So yeah. Well, you could just sure. Hey, it doesn't take. You could yeah. do a startup for that, and just to see if you, if it if it works. I'm sure it will, and I'm sure there will be a resistance to it. You watch how fast. But watch how fast the, the the tower of life or the tree, the new tree of life. That's off limits. Why is it off limits to us? Well, the gods forbid it. And who are the gods? They're not from some other world. They're here. They're us. Let me see if I can make that actually um, pass that along to the right people to make that happen. Well, sure, the tech guys could do it. They've got the money, they've got the technology. Pause. So now let's resume at um, black and red ants fighting for sugar, just like there's a big game of Monopoly that's being played on planet Earth. Uh, yeah, the whole level of uh, competition is artificial because, again, there's no lack, there's nothing but abundance. Everything is available to us. Um, the old saying is, God provided and man divided. It's, again, it's based on fear. Um, there was something that, 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 brought, that keeps popping into my head, though, about healing. You know, some people have the gift of healing, and where is it coming from? This is not an endorsement for religion, by the way, okay? I, I just wanted, I wanted, to, I wanted to demonstrate something to people here. Let's see if I can get this on camera. Maybe you can put that yeah. in front of the camera. Okay, let's do it. Okay, and then you tell us about what we're what we're seeing here. Yeah, maybe just to bring it a little closer. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's called the Transfiguration of Christ. That was sometime before he was crucified, up on a mountain that we still don't know where it is. But that's him under, um, at night, basically glowing like a light bulb. So, and now most people would recognize that he is one of the greatest healers allegedly, that, that, that we've ever known. How in the world did he do it? He wasn't a doctor. It's because he, he was radiating that love that you see right there. And so there's, it doesn't have to be technology. It really doesn't, you know. It's a, again, it, has to, it, it, it starts on a holistic level at, at the, in the soul and the heart. And most people don't even know that this event even happened because religions don't want to talk about it because they don't understand it. But it's, it's real. What he was doing there was healing the planet. He was radiating love to the entire planet, even though he knew he was physically going to be crucified because of the fear that people... I mean, that's the only reason he showed up, was to help us heal our hearts. So it, it took me forever to figure out what was going on there, because that made zero sense to me. Why, how, how does somebody glow in the... You know? well, but I experienced that too. Not me personally, but I, when I met... 
uh, September 22nd, 1985, when I was on the mountain and I was meditating or whatever, and I went out of my body and I, I met this guy, said he was my father. He looked exactly like that. He didn't say I'm Jesus. He just, he was radiating this light and I couldn't figure it out because yes. I had never even seen that picture at the time. I was only, you know, I was a young man. I didn't know anything about transfiguration of Christ. That only came later as I was trying to understand this stuff. And I, I do want to put it in the context of healing because when you are healthy, you tend not to get sick or fall down and hurt yourself. Yeah. Or if you do, you heal really fast, fast yeah. much faster yeah. than when if you're pissed off and you're giving all the pills and somebody's stabbing you and stitching you and whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah it'll work. That's a really long way around. But it doesn't have to be like that. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay. Radiate light and love and from your will, heart. From your heart, and we will heal faster, have peace faster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Individually and collectively. I mean, yes. seriously, that's how he was doing those so-called miracles. You people didn't see the light coming off of him, but I guarantee you it was there. I guarantee you it was there. Yeah. That's a really important um, next step in what um, some of our friends are doing with their uh, with the spirituality is they are figuring out how to have a um, of, 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 of a phosphorescent rock that can sense prana and then the more spiritually developed someone is while they're looking at the rock the more it Phosphorescence. Whoa. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, 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 there's a, a bunch of interesting... Um, that would be like a love meter. To know... To, a to, love meter, a love potion. Right. To, yeah, to, exactly. Yes, to understand a person. That's why I brought it up. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. No. That's well, a good see one. That hypothetically, or in a fictional sense, that exists in the books I was telling you about that are on my website. The AMI, A-M-I, the friend. Yeah. <clears throat> so... I figured somebody would already has it and somebody else here is going to come up with it. Although, do we really need to, to see that? I mean, maybe it'll help. You can see it in people's eyes, but yeah. then it's kind of like, that, that's the science component too is potentially that you can, that, 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 that could be interesting seeing but how. But if you, did, yeah. if you feel, see, here's the thing. You, 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 <laughs> you either feel it or you don't. It's really impossible to fake when a person is emitting, radiating that love. Yeah, or not. Yeah, yeah I mean, because, like I said, the so-called these vampires, you know, the, the dark side, whatever, psychopaths, they're good at tricking people, but only, only those who are still harboring the fear, that are looking for someone or something else to save them, rather than doing the work and actually reconnecting to the cosmos and then being empowered and healing themselves and then helping others to do the same thing. That's the chain reaction that we're looking for. Yes. That will solve all these problems. Yes. So one, one guy called in and said, because I was asking on the show, if, if love is the answer, what is the question? Mm -hmm. He said, it doesn't matter what the question is. Mm -hmm. it's, it solves all the problems, so just, you know, that's kind of a, it's, it's an idiotic question. Well, maybe the question is, it's what, irrelevant. Maybe the question is what is the meaning of life? And then, uh, or love. Well, I think the meaning of life is to be in love. And so then that would be the question potentially. But Could yeah, be. the answer is just love. Yeah. What about the world without borders? Ah, uh, sheesh. Whenever we had that uh, initial overview effect <clears throat> of seeing the planet without the borders, it was fascinating how more spiritually awakened we became. And, right. And so we all want to live in this world that our hearts know and feel is possible yeah. but th right now there's this like complexity of like okay i can't just drop the border because then the next day we'll just have a bunch of people show up in our country that it's happening anyway it's happening anyway yeah <laughs> look even if you have the borders there's people going to cross them anyway the thing is it's artificial mm -hmm. just like time just like money mm -hmm. and, and to a large extent religion you know, we've, we're kind of touching on all this, this we're kind of going around the, the same issue from different angles, all right? That's what I, I really think we're doing. Yeah. Which is a good thing. It's, that's what holistic means. Yeah. You look at the whole thing from every angle, not just one or two angles, right? Yes. So, so borders is, is a, it's not an illusion if you believe it. That's, that's the shared hallucination you were talking about before. Yeah, money, time, and borders But, now. but truthfully, borders only exist because of, a, of fear. 
of so-called other people. Mm -hmm. But who are other people? Who are others, yeah. <laughs> no such thing. No such thing. We're all part of the same family. Yeah. See, and that's how you eliminate borders. That's how we will ultimately eliminate a border. Not just on this planet, but throughout all of creation, we'll start to, like I said, once we drop a lot of this fear stuff, enough of the fear quotient is, is goes down and we raise our love quotient, those other loving family members from off our world are going to interact with us and, and help us and show us the way to become networked with all the other civilized loving worlds. Yeah. And there's no borders between them. It's not like Star Wars or the Federation, you know, like everybody's fighting with everybody throughout the galaxy for competing for something. Mm -hmm. they're, they're cooperating, they're collaborating, they're compassionate. They actually enjoy sharing with each other, like family do. Family loves yeah. each other, okay? Yes. And it makes it strong. There's, a, there's an old analogy about that. One twig, you can snap. Two, it's harder. Three, it's almost impossible. That's the strength of the family. Yeah. And that's the strength of dropping all our borders, too. We're under the illusion that somehow we need them to be strong, to be a strong country. No, actually, it makes us weaker. That perception is cutting us off, dividing yes. us up, and isolating yes. us yes. from each other. Yes, and propagating fear rather than that love. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, I know, I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself. Maybe I am. No, but. it's 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 actually, you, like you, you just described it, we're looking at the conversation of the path towards peace and prosperity from so many different angles. Yeah. That's why, yeah, I, yeah. I really like that. Um, it's again, it's just that it's not a light switch. Like, okay, you know. fine, like the... We, we get that all the things that we've been talking about have been, we want as part of our future, but we're purposely at this point because we disconnected from source, so we had all these issues arise, and now it's not a light switch to turn off the bad ones and to light switch up for turn on the good ones, it's just that easy. Yeah. So that way there's this like titration process of how do we actually transition to the world without borders? How do we actually get universal health care? How do we actually do global disarmament, reset the global financial system, abolish organized religion? Like, yeah. Okay. Let's do um, ethical governance and peace and prosperity. So let's wrap with these thoughts. Okay. Uh, no one else can represent you. Not really. Not in the not in reality. Okay. The whole concept of advocating your personal responsibility and saying, you know, my lawyer or my politician or my priests or whatever, my doctor, they they all need to represent my best interests. That is a huge lie, and it, this, none of this is going to stop uh, as long as we keep um, supporting that system individually. See, this is, this is the thing about personal responsibility. It's not just one thing, it's everything. And that's where, again, it's not really complicated. It's just hard. It is hard to do this, to start the process. And you have to be courageous, I think, on some level. Not crazy, but, you know, why is courage important? Because it's the opposite of fear. It's an aspect of being in love with yourself. Yes. And saying, I can, I can do these things. I choose to do these things. And I know that I can have help. I can ask for help if I'm, if it's really hard, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're asking somebody to do it for you. Okay, but it, it's okay to ask them for some help. Yeah. And I told you, it's happened to me many times I wasn't even expecting the help to come, actually. But I was surprised when it came. I was grateful. And it often came at times and in ways that I wasn't expecting at all. And it literally took me sometimes decades to understand how beautiful, how profound and, and, and loving that help was or is, you know, in my life. And that's why I feel obligated to share it with other people. I don't always do the best job explaining it because because it's an I, embodied wisdom. It's an experiential. Yeah, it is experiential. Yeah. yeah, but I try. You know, I think it's important to tell the stories, which then get people more um, feeling their, them put the feelers out to try and also experience that themselves yeah. and share the stories around how people feel it differently or feel yeah. it similarly. Yes. As long as it's based in love and positivity and just being practical too. I mean, I don't think anything we've talked about is. I know it may sound strange because some people are hearing this for the first time. It's like, whoa, disarmament? 
you know, uh, no borders? I mean, what was this guy crazy? You know, we can't live like that. Well, actually, we can. We just choose the, not to. The world our hearts all know is possible. Mm -hmm. And it's just that the transition to get there isn't the light switch, which makes it no. harder. No. And then, but the slow uh, self work and the slow away from fear towards love mentality across the world will grassroots enable all of the conversations. Well, the time having. is now, Alan. Unfortunately, it's not like we have forever. I, do, I mean, well, we kind of do and we don't. There's cycles that happen, right, throughout the, the environment, and we know that nature. And this world, our solar system, which is actually called a heliosphere, it's not a flat thing like a record, it's yeah. a bubble of bubble. energy, yeah. right? Yes. Coming out of the sun, and it is transiting through the creation. We, galaxy, whatever you want to call it, but it's something called space weather, and we have entered our little bubble of energy, the solar system, has moved into this massive cloud of energy that NASA for some reason calls the fluff. Other people in the New Age call it the photon zone or the photon band. It's an age of enlightenment. Literally, we're in the light. We've moved into a much higher energy region of, of creation. Yes. Okay? And we're going to transit through it for at least two, three hundred years according to NASA's you know, estimations or calculations. And <laughs> we have to get with the program. That's why the planet has heated up. Actually, all the planets throughout the solar system have heated up. That's why you have more geological earthquakes and volcanoes and weird weather and just people basically, if, you, if they're negative, that extra energy is making them actually feel more, it's amping them up in a more, you know, that negativity, where's it gonna go? You turn it up, if you're listening to freaking metal music, you turn it up, well, you're gonna get louder metal music. It's not going to suddenly just shift just because you crank up the amp. So <laughs> that's the problem we're facing. That's why some people are just losing it right now because the, the energy level is increasing. The amount of conscious evolution happening around our planet so rapidly through so many different modalities, the meditations, the psychedelics, the neurotechnologies, the connections to source across all these different ways, embodiments of indigenous wisdom, connections to nature. I mean, there are just endless amount of ways in that we literally feel it. I mean, this program, uh, like a year and a half ago, was not as grounded in source. It was not as grounded in nature and mm. the spiritual wisdoms. Mm -hmm. And so now, all of a sudden, this program <laughs> becomes more <laughs> awakened spiritually as well, you know, because huh. the host in itself has as well. Yeah. And so it's just very interesting that, I mean, even this show is an exact example of what you were just describing and what we were just talking about with this overall consciousness evolution happening huh. around the planet. People are, are really wondering, well, where, what is my way of climbing up that mountain of conscious evolution? Do I do this? Do I do that? How do I partake in the process? And there's so many different ways to pick from this like buffet a la carte of the process. But like those long periods of focus of climbing up the mountain and the sincere self work towards love away from fear will get us to the peace and prosperity. Yeah, it's one step at a time. Like you said, you don't just flip, flip a switch and end up. You have to earn it. You have to work for it in order for it to have value for you individually, us, I should say. Um, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's a gift. Believe it or not, this is a gift, and it's our divine birthright, and if we choose not to accept it, that's permissible. Unfortunately, you can't enforce enlightenment or love in somebody's heart, right? They don't, if the person, if the soul does not want to have that connectivity, doesn't want to have that level of creativity, peace and prosperity, family, that's their choice. That is designed into it as well. Free will is part of the process. I'm only mentioning it because I, I was shown that this is, even though there's a lot of us are going to choose this path back into the light to connect with the web of light and all the creativity and the prosperity and the peace and love and happiness that comes with it, some, some of us are, choose, are going to remain in fear. Some of us here will, re will and, remain. Yeah, and there's a split happening. I wasn't sure how yeah. that they were going, we're going to coexist. Actually, I felt we couldn't coexist. But they can coexist. It's just that one will be a higher level of conscious evolution and the other will be fear based. Once we, if we, I should say, 
if and when we cross a certain threshold, a level with the tipping point of love quotient here, yeah. and, the, and the rest of our family starts to come in and give us assistance, part of the assistance is that they will remove certain individuals that are danger to themselves and others. Yeah. They're not gonna punish them, they're just gonna put them someplace safe. Yeah. Because the, it's like I said about weeds in the garden, you know, you can't have this lush, beautiful garden and permit the weeds to keep growing in there. It inhibits yeah. the process. Yeah. All right. And, and so, you know, under the penal system that we currently have, just, just crushing them, punishing them and, or killing people that you know, have fear, it doesn't go away. That was the really weird part. It's like you can't, it, it, it still persists in the background. It's the sub program running in the background. So we have to collectively raise above it, you know, not just, not just punish individuals that are embodying it. We have to literally, we have to embody more of, of the love than they embody the fear and the hatred in order to, to really tip yes. the whole thing over. Yes. Then they just kind of fade out, yeah. you know, or like I said, we get help. We yes. get help dealing with it in a very benign, peaceful and uh, compassionate way. The love quotient tipping point. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. That's a good one. That's our that's our next episode <sighs> title slash album cover slash <laughs> film score. Oh, yeah, yeah. Love quotient tipping point. Well, the thing is, it's a it's obtain, attainable. This is not unrealistic. What we're talking about. I know it sounds weird to some people. Um, Nothing's impossible, no. especially not maximizing prosperity so, and peace. Do you want to know something? My wife did an ad campaign. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. Let me, let me just see this. You're going to love this. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. no, she it's, actually, it's she sold one. that to Scientology yeah. years ago. It's really obvious. I don't know. It may come in backwards on it or it just looks back. It, it's, um... <laughs> yeah, for those for those that are just listening to, yeah, Robert just wrote impossible and then crossed off the I, I am. am. So it just says possible now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hey, it's a great campaign. The uh, the other one that I'm that I'm familiar with is when it's a there's like a guy that's kicking the I am off of impossible and sure. uh, it just says possible. Yeah, yeah, it's all a matter of perception. It is a matter of perception, and especially this one is. The most important is that we do our self work, that we develop peace and love and prosperity and take the weeds of fear and. So we can continue cultivating the garden. Yes. Yeah, there's a component there. Consciousness is a huge part of it. But the creativity, the level of creativity that we can attain, <laughs> we've only just touched the like the, we have, just the right. tip of it. Yeah. The that's, tip of it. That's the big one is that um, if you really want to see creativity flourish, then do this because then you'll see the real creativity right now. It's just like a little yeah. tiny. I know this sounds a little bit cert like circular logic, but. We were created by a creator to be creative. That's good, I like that. Well, <laughs> because yeah. it's true. Yeah. Okay, but most of us has lost sight of it because we're, the fear creeps in and it overshadows yeah. the creativity, okay? We use our creative um, ability to, to manifest things that support the fear. Instead of support the love, yeah. Right. Yep. Created by the creator to be creative. I love it. It's true. It's a, it's, it just doesn't get any more true. true than that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like... It, it's like it, the I, most true. If yeah. somebody can refute that, please, I'd love to hear it. I'd yeah. love to hear how you do that. <laughs> just kidding. Just yeah. kidding. Well, I would be open. Please leave your thoughts in the comments <laughs> below about how to refute that. Because yeah. we would love to... We'd love to hear from you. On no, how, we were how born to, to be bad and kill people. <laughs> created by creator to be creative. I guess the only re refuting point that I think some like science may argue would be something like 
w w there was no point in the creation, and we are just here. That's I've heard that, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a very sad... Um, <laughs> that, no, I mean, it really is a very sad perspective. It means that that individual has lost sight of creation altogether, and more importantly, because they've, they've cut themselves off. Anybody can know this stuff, Alan. It's not a secret. Yeah. It's not a secret. It's actually it's it's available to everybody all, all the, the time. time. Yeah. <laughs> every breath of air is that right there. Yeah, it is. And then that's every look in a person's eye, every drink of water, every creative expression. Well, I'll totally. tell you, it's a little. It, it's I, actually it's totally overwhelming when you do plug into the the web of life. Mm -hmm. it, it. Some people they say when they have the Kundalini awakening. Yeah. It, it isn't about just the energy here, it's what's coming through. Through. It's overwhelming yeah. because the, your consciousness is basically overloaded and um, also... It's I gorgeous. You, you, it is, but it's you... It's being really high without any drugs. It's amazing. Well, it's also, if, if you, I, like you said, if you flip the switch, you can blow the bulb. That's a good point. You know, because <laughs> it, it can't yeah. handle that kind of wattage. So you work your way up to be able to handle that right, kind of wattage. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Titration of enlightenment. Yeah. <laughs> of, of, yeah, of, of the slower paced trajectory towards love, peace, and prosperity. Yeah, Robert, this has been another amazing conversation, <laughs> nice. super wide ranging. I've loved it so much. Me too. What a great topic. The yeah. path to peace and prosperity is so critical. It's mission critical, the most mission critical thing. I mean, yeah, in that big synthesis, that needs to be more prominent for what we're writing about right now. Because if the first point is that, first principle is that we all come from source, the second principle is you gotta know thyself and know your North Star. Maybe even the second principle is peace and prosperity, or maybe it's the third principle is peace and prosperity. Right now we're also playing around with, you know, create more value than you capture. But yeah, peace and prosperity is up there. It's, it's like literally the point of the creation that was made by the creator is for us to figure out how to be peaceful and prosperous. And that's like the ultimate test. Yeah, but like I said, it's not complicated. We make it complicated. That's where the difficulty comes in, is, is, is literally facing our inner fears, pulling those weeds from our heart, man. Nobody else can do that. We have to do that for ourselves. No drug does yeah. that, by the way. No drug that I'm aware of will, can, can do that for you. Yeah, that's a key is that the sincere self-work has to come ourselves. But it's okay to ask for help. I mean, yeah, you ask know, for help. Yeah. But, yeah. but ultimately, yeah. you have to make, Correct. we yeah. have to individually make the choice. If we make good choices based on, uh, you know, good information like this, then we can move forward collectively, okay? Because it actually does get easier. The whole, once you're past the hard part, right, and you start networking with other people that have done the work, well, and you work together, well then actually you're sharing the load and things actually start to happen much easier, much faster, and in a much bigger way. Yeah. It's not like you're all alone carrying yes, this thing yes. up a hill by yes, yourself. Yes, yes, Yeah. The, the further conscious evolution of more and more people makes it easier and easier to be a conscious being. Right now it's like trying to be a tuning fork in the matrix. And so, yeah. Yeah, but more and more yeah. people are waking up. So this yeah. is, like I said, the timing is really important. I think if we don't get this done now, um, we may collapse. Probably, yeah, it could collapse. But so what? It'll it'll reset. Reset anyway. Yeah. But this is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we would like to see if we can break through. Yeah. Let's see if we can break through. You know. Yeah, that's why I said it's a yeah. gift. This particular gift, time. Yeah. And this particular information is is uh, a yes. gift, not from me or you, but from of course, you know, totally, not just the creator, but all of our extended family throughout creation. Creation, exactly, the hundred billion of us that came before. Yeah. Us. Hey, by the way, um, I finally solved the riddle: which came first, the chicken or the egg? Somebody asked me, 
The answer is uh, the creator came before the creation. It's, it's an old joke from the bird tribe, but anyways, it, it's, not, it's not meant to be funny. The answer is actually very profound. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's an insight, basically. Here's another question. That would be, I do think that that would lead to um, panentheism, which then means that the, the, the omniscient and omnipotent deity or creator is then separate from uh, creation itself. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You're right. Those two things could coexist. It's an extension of self. And so you could, I think that it Could is, they have happened at the same time is the question. It could, but I mean... The, the, so then it didn't come before. They came at the same time. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, well look the at it this creator way. creator like, came before the creation. What if the creator just made the creation? Or they were made at the same time? I don't think it was just one thing. Like, you just... I think, therefore, I am, okay? It's like, <laughs> it was in the beginning, allegedly, was this word, whatever the word was, this vibration that we call creation. Could have been love. Which probably, but I mean, it was based on that. So, so all of the various individual aspects that are manifesting do take time. I don't think it all happened at one shot because... It's so complex. It is extremely complex. And it's also organic. The way we understand organic. It's very organic. All right. It has an intelligence and it is evolving. So it took a long time to get here. But yeah. that, it, that's all relative. It, the thing is, it's. Well, if you, you know about me, in music or any form of creativity, it's like, oh, I did a song, so now I'm done? No. You, you, so at some point, you're going to find another song and another yeah. song, right? Or you're going to paint another picture, whatever. Yeah. Because that's how creativity is. And each song and each painting is slightly different. And it's beautiful. They're all beautiful, right? So I, anyway, I'm sorry. I kind of feel like I'm running around in circles again, but... It's beautiful. Um, and I don't know how, why I was saying chicken and egg. Well, it's because some people still struggle. They, they ignore it like it's nothing. It's actually very... It's, it, it's a key. It's supposed to trigger... An insight. Because it's a very relatable one, the chicken and the egg, and which one came first? It is, the it, creator made the creation. Yeah, creator... Created the creation. Cre yeah, For us to be creative. Here's the thing. Here, I guess what I was trying to say is, the creator it is self-generated. It's self-generated. Yeah, it didn't come from nothing. Obviously, it's always been something, or it couldn't be something mm -hmm. now. It's always been something. Yeah, but it, it did that. That's what creativity is. So right? where did the creator yeah. come from? No. It's, always, it's just always been. It's blank. All right? But it's just it's, blank. It has all the potential right here. Through what? Creativity. Because what? I'm a creator. Yeah. All right? So I, that's me. That's, my, that's all self Generated, and, and again, this is why it's so important to take responsibility for ourselves, for our level of yes, creativity. Yes, yes. Okay, instead of just putting it out there and saying, "I need to be saved," saved or yeah. you know, "Fix me." I need someone to manage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, that's I need to really, be governed. I need to have a politician. Yeah, all that. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Versus right. versus literally feeling the divine power within you being born by creation for you to be creative and fully owning your shit. Yeah, well, the big part of it is reconnecting with that yes. force, the yes. force, as yes. they say. That's the first Wars. principle, is reconnecting with source. That's the first principle. Well, the source, as we say, it's the force, the, 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 the web force of, of light. The source. Yeah, it's the, the web of light is the force. When, you, when we connect to that, it gives us all the energy, information, creativity that we could ever possibly need. Or want yes all right yes because individually we're very relatively weak like your, you know your computers is pretty powerful but no 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 when you Let's put plug it in, in the internet yeah it's the yeah. same for us for, as souls when we connect to the web of light the force is with us I like that one we're stronger like when we plug the CPU into the internet. Well, yeah, if you want to be stronger, smarter, healthier, and happier, increase your love quotient. Connect yep. to the force, or the source, whatever you want to call it, the web of light. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Leveled up. <laughs> Another level up. Robert. Dude, thank that you was a good so one. Much. That was so good. That was so good, my brother. That <laughs> Sorry, was so good. We gotta pat, we gotta pat, pat ourselves on the back. back. We would, we, would, we would love to hear the thoughts in the comments below on the episode. We'd love to hear from you. Definitely let us know what you're thinking about this path to peace and prosperity, about the different topics we talked about, global disarmament, resetting the global financial system, abolition of organized religion, universal health care, the world without borders, ethical governance, all these types of things, the love quotient. Let us know what you're thinking about all of these things. Really, do let us know and ha let's have a conversation about how to best get there. Talk more to your friends, families, coworkers, people online on social media about how to best get there and ha just have more of these conversations around us from moving forward. Practice that sincere self-work. Make that a more common practice towards love, away from hit fear. And also, check out the links in the bio to Unicus Magazine and the rest of Robert's work. And also check out the links to Simulation as well below. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations, the spiritual leaders around the world that you believe and support them. Our links are below to our PayPal, Patreon, cryptocurrency links. You can design cool merch and get paid. All that stuff's in the bio. And also, do build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in. And we will see you soon. Peace. <laughs> it's a wrap. That was a good one, man. That was really good. <laughs> that was one of the best interviews. You told me this was going to rock. Yeah, in you... person rocks, brother. <laughs> in person rocks. Robert, no, I, before... I wasn't expecting it to go this well. Honestly, I didn't. No, I mean, some kind of synergy, collaborative, whatever we just did, that was freaking amazing. But that's what's up. Like, so, so actually a massive part of what we do is like the interlocutor. So yeah. like if the interlocutor is, has a bright worldview, diverse worldview, and is able to emotionally engage with the person, draw out their wisdoms, play good tennis back and forth. Yeah. That's why afterward people say that to us is like, good shit. That was profound.